we finished with the basic concept of data warehouse and then the data warehouse modeling which is about the data cube and OLAP. Now let's deal with the data warehouse design and usage and some kind of implementation. In order to make a good data warehouse, we need to understand the design process. So there are some design process that I mentioned here. The first is top down. Or the other is bottom up. We call it top down, yeah. maybe from the CEO to the operational level of the company. We call it top down. So it starts with the overall design and planning. So you already design, you already know the framework, you already know the architecture, and then you just implement. Usually big companies have this kind of design process. But sometimes you need to do this bottom up. So from the bottom to the upper side, or we call it, we start with the experiments and prototypes. So it's more like rapid development. We can use top down or bottom up approaches, or sometimes it is a combination of both. We can also look at the software engineering point of view. So if you are in the engineering uh, department, so you will see some of the design process like wall of wall or the spiral. The waterfall means it is a structure and systematic analysis at each step before proceeding to the next. So for example, this one. When you develop a software, you need to check the requirement. After you finish with the requirement, you will design. After you have the design, you will implement. After you have the implementation, you will verify. After you verify, you will do the maintenance. So it will be step by step. They call it as waterfall. But there can be the spiral. Spiral means it is rapid generation of increasingly functional system, short turn around time. You can see from this diagram, from this figure, usually the concept will be starting from the small. It starts from the small and then we create the prototype number one. So we need to start with the objective, the small objective, and then we will identify and resolve the risk. So after we create the prototype one, yeah, we develop and test it. And then after we finish with the development and the test, we will plan the next iteration. So we will keep doing this one until we have the prototype two. And then yeah, we will do again until we have the operational prototype. After we have review all those things, we can implement in the real world situation. So we call this is the spiral. So there are some typical data warehouse design process. In this case, uh, we can choose a business process to model. For example, in the previous examples, I gave you the orders or sales. Or uh, yeah, if you want to know uh, some invoices, then yeah, you need to know what is the business process to generate the invoice. So if this process is organizational, then a data warehouse model will. So you already learned about the data warehouse. If this process is departmental, so if it is only one department, Department A, Department B, Department C. Then 
we will use the remark more. Okay, so from the previous section, we learn about the data mark and the data warehouse. Or we can choose the grain. Grain means the atomic level of the data. So usually it is represented in the fact table. So if you still remember last time, we create the sales fact table. We can also start from the small fact table, like last time shipping fact table. Okay. Or we can design this data warehouse with the dimensions. If you still remember, the dimension means the variable. Okay. It can be time, it can be item, supplier, and so on. Or you can choose the measure. The measure can be the dollar sold. So in the sales, you can see how many dollars that the sales has been made. Or we can have the average dollar sold and so on. So yeah, we learn already about the measures in previous section. The recommended approach for the data warehouse development, we can start from the smallest one. Okay. So we need to define a high level corporate data model. After we have this definition, so we can create maybe the smaller one, data mark. I guess you don't know. Data mark is specifically for small section in the company, small section in the department. Maybe this is department A. So this might be the department B. Okay. So the department A have the data mark. Department B have data mark. Another department can have another data mark. So every of this data mark can be allocated in the distributed data marks. Or once you have the definition, you can make the enterprise data warehouse. Do you still remember? Enterprise data warehouse. If it is data mark, it is only for the department or the sub-organization. But if it is the enterprise data warehouse, it is for the full organization, for the all organization in that company. So when we have this distributed data mark and when we have this enterprise data warehouse, at the final stage, we can create the multi-tier data warehouse. Some of the data warehouse usage, we can create three kinds of data warehouse applications. The first is the information processing. It supports query. So if you learn about the database, you will know about the query or basic statistical analysis. Or you can use reporting using cross tabs, tables, charts, graphs. So those are the information processing. Analytical processing. In the analytical processing, you know the multi-dimensional analysis of the data warehouse data. So we can have many variables. It should support the basic OLAP operation, like the slice, dice, drilling, piloting, so those are the operation that we learned before. And yeah, this is our focus, data mining. So the data warehouse should have this kind of application. So we want to discover the knowledge from the hidden patterns. So it should support the association 
or some analytical models we can perform the classification prediction we can present the mining result using visualization tool now this the industries has been shifted if you learn more about the OLAP now it is moving toward the online analytical mining so it is not only the analytical processing but it should be related with, with the mining functions or the data mining functions so why do we need to consider the online analytical mining because we will need the high quality of data in the data warehouse so when you create the data warehouse you already make sure that every data is already integrated every data has been consistent every data has been clean so when you make sure with this one then it will be easier for you to do the exploratory data analysis it will be easier for you to do the data mining so now this yeah the companies try to shift toward this OLAM when you try to create this kind of a data warehouse you need to consider the efficient data cube computation what does it mean by the efficient data cube Competition. Data cube can be viewed as a lattice of cuboids. Do you still remember these cuboids? We have the bottommost cuboid. We call it as the base cuboid. So this is the base cuboid. And the topmost we call it apex. We call it this one as apex. We call it apex, or this is the qubit with only one cell. Now the question is, how many qubits in an n-dimensional cube with l levels? Dimension. Do you still remember dimension? We call this is the variable. Okay, we call this is the features, or we call this is the columns, levels. What does it mean by levels? In the location. So if we want to check the location, there can be several levels. For example, I want to know the street name. So that is the lowest level. And we can go to the higher level. For example, the city. We can go to the higher level. For example, province. We can go to the higher level, which is, for example, country. Then, in this case, we have four levels. So the level is one, two, three, and four. Okay. So the number of cuboids will be determined by the dimension and also the levels. So this is the formula. T is equal to the, do you know what is this symbol? If we have sigma, what is the meaning by this one? Sum. Okay. If we use the sigma, we want to do the summation. Let's say we have the sigma xi. We have the sigma xi where the i is from 
one until n then i can say that this is the addition of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus and so on until x n okay but this symbol means product Do you know what is product? Product means multiplication. Then if I have the product xi for i equals to 1 until n, then it will be x1 multiplied x2 multiply x3 multiply until xn okay we will do the multiplication so the formula can be embedded into the problem if n equals to 3 so n is the dimension okay. and its dimension has one level then the t or this is the number of cuboids it will be li li means the level for its dimension okay. i is the number of dimension it will be one until three so because we have only one level then one plus one one plus one this is the first dimension and then for the second dimension we have one plus one and for the third dimension we have one plus one we can make this summary as one plus one power of three sorry this is not multiply because this is the product okay. one plus one multiply by one plus one multiply one plus one so it is one plus one exponent three one plus one exponent three it means the result is a you can see here one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight cuboids when you have three variables and for every variables it has only one level okay. what if we have n equals to 10 so we have 10 variables and then for every dimension we have four levels so attribute one it has one two three four attribute two it has one two three four attribute three it has one two three four levels it means you can just calculate l okay. l i means the number of levels for every dimension for every attribute so we have four in this variable so for plus one and then multiply in the second variable we have another four levels so we have four plus one in the variable three we have another four levels so multiply four plus one until we have 10 variables because the n is 10 so the formula will be 4 plus 1 exponent 10 so you can calculate how many cuboids that we need to create with the n equals to 10 and this each dimension has four levels
So this is another example. Okay. So if you want to get a data cube with three dimensions, time, location, item. So the total number of cuboids is two multiplied by two multiplied by two. Because this one, this one, this one is only one level. And we have three dimensions. Because every dimension has one level, so we can just use this formula. Two multiplied by two multiplied by two. What if the dimension has different levels? For example, I have this time, location, and item, but now for the time, Okay, for the variable time, it has three levels. So the time will have month, quarter, and year. What happened? So the variable one, it has three levels. The variable two, it has only one level. The variable three, it has only one level. Then in this case, we can have the formula 3, which is the level, plus 1 for the attribute 1, and then multiply by 1 level of attribute 2, multiply by 1 level in attribute 3. So, it will be 4 multiply by 2, multiply by two. Okay. So you can see that yeah, we will have sixteen cuboids with this kind of uh, different levels with different dimensions. So the data cubes computation, it will also depend on the materialization. In the materialization of the data cube, we can separate it into three. We can materialize every cuboid. Every cuboid means full materialization. So I want to use every cuboid. So I use all the possible cuboids. But in the worst case, in the worst case, we can use none or no materialization. So we will not use any of the cuboids. This is in the worst case. Or we will use only some or partial materialization. Maybe we will select only product and date, product country, and date country. So we will not include this one. Or maybe we will not include this one. Yeah, that's possible. We call it this is partial materialization. So this kind of selection, actually it is based on the size. Or it is based on the sharing. Whether the company want to share their cuboids or not. Or it depends on the access frequency. How many people access that cuboids? So if the access frequency is high, we will consider that cuboids for our analysis. So it is uh, some examples how we can compute the cube. So in the real data warehouse, we can define and do some computation with the data manipulation query language or DMQL. If you learn about the database, you can uh, create this kind of DMQL. So we can define the cube cells. So the cube cells, it contains three attributes or three dimensions. And we have one measures. So this is the dimension. This is the measures. 
and we can compute cube sales. So for every cube, it will be computed. Okay? So we have cube, so small cube, and then we can also have another cube, okay? and so on, with this compute cube sales. And we can transform it into the SQL-like language. If you learn about the database, you will uh, see this SQL. For example, we want to select the item city here, and then I would like to check the sum, which is the total amount from the item city and year. And I want to extract those from the table sales. And for the SQL, if it is in the data warehouse, there will be a function cube part. So if you learn about database, you will learn about group by. But in the data warehouse, there is a specific component for creating the cube. We call it the cube by. So you can compute the following like date product customer, date product, date customer, product customer, date product and customer. And we can also do the efficient processing of OLAP with the query. What does it mean by query? So we look at the previous examples, SQL. Maybe some of you are not familiar with the SQL. SQL means the structure query language. So this SQL is used in the database. Whenever you want to extract some data, yeah, you can define what are the attributes and what are the functions that you want to declare and what is the table name. With the OLAP queries, we can determine which materialized cuboids should be selected for this OLAP. For example, I have the query like this. I want to know the brand of the item. I want to know the province or the state of the item with the condition year 2020. Now, there are four materialized cuboids. So, they already make some kind of query. They already make some kind of SQL. And the SQL is generating like this one. Your item name, city. The second materialized cuboid is your brand and country. The third materialized cuboid is your brand and province or state. The last one is the item name, province or states, with the condition where year equals to 2020. So which should be selected to process the query? If we have four materialized cuboids, the most efficient processing for this requirement is the number four. The materialized cuboids means we can view the data. So if you want to view the data with the number one, it means all the year will be shown because there is no condition. Number two, also, you will show all the year and you will show all the countries. But the requirement is province or state. If you look at the materialized keywords in the number three, you will see everything, year, brand, province or state. It is based on the requirement. But you will see all the year. So it means it's so big. 
we do not know which year will be shown. So it's not efficient. So the most efficient query is this one. I want to see the item name and then I want to see the province states and the condition is the, in the year is 2020. So the materialized keywords can be prepared. So every time you run the data warehouse, it will show already the data as it is extracted. So for this problem, yeah, we can choose the number four, which is the most efficient to get the result as this one. Uh, we will also need to know about these server architectures. When we are dealing with the OLAP, uh, we can distinguish with the uh, relational OLAP or ROLAP. It is from the DBMS. So the DBMS means the database management system. In the most database management system, they will use relational DB or some DB they use extended relational. They use this relational or extended relational DB to store and manage warehouse data and OLAP middleware. So if you know some big companies like IBM or Oracle. So those companies, they have the database and they use the basic relational DBMS. So include some optimization of DB backend and then it implements the aggregation navigation logic and some additional tools and services. So if you use the data warehouse from the big company, they already have this kind of services. And it is greater scalability because companies will use this kind of relational DB. The other case with the server architecture is the multi-dimensional OLAP. It is a sparse array-based multi-dimensional storage engine. If you learn about the data structure, you will learn about the array. Array means a number in the list. So it will be uh, in the list and all will be in one array. And so if we, if we want to get another array, then it will be inside of this array. So it is mentioned as the sparse array based multi-dimensional storage engine. Yeah, people said that it is fast indexing to pre-computed summarized data. So whenever you have the summary of the data, yeah, using this sparse array multi-dimensional storage, it will be very uh, fast. Or we can use hybrid. The Microsoft SQL Server, they use hybrid. It is flexible. If it is in the low level, so the low level means the data which have very, uh, there are many data available. If you still remember, street, or maybe from the previous one, country, city, and then let's say uh, province, and street. So in one country, there will be a lot of cities. Or in the one country, there will be a lot of province. And in one province or in one city, there will be a lot of streets. Okay. So the lowest level will be, the lowest level will be law. So the DB or the data warehouse will use relation because the scalability is very good. But for the summary, like the country, yeah, maybe the country will be not that a lot. In the world, we have around 200 countries. 
So we can just use the higher level or ring. Okay, that's all about this data warehouse. So mention the data warehouse design process. The first is top down approach. Okay, and then we have the bottom up. Or we can combine. We can see from the software engineering approach. We learn about two, which is the okay, good waterfall and the hero. Okay. And we learn about the typical data warehouse design process. What are they? The first is we can determine from the business process. So if you know the business process to generate an invoice, then yeah, you can just use it. Or you can use the green. What is the green? The smallest level of the data, or sometimes we can say it is at the fact table. Or we can design this data warehouse based on the dimension. Or we can define or we can design this data warehouse based on the methods. Okay. Mention the three kind of impossible application from data warehouse. So we learned there are three information processing and then analytical processing and the one that we learn now which is the data mine. How many cuboids in a four-dimensional cube with two levels? So the formula is the T equals to the product I equals to 1 until N L I plus 1. So we have two level for every dimension okay, because there is no uh, other node. So we can say that okay, the two levels are in every dimension. Then it will be 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 1. Then yeah, it will be 3 power of 4. So there will be like 81 cubits. Okay. What are the OLAP server architectures? We have 3. Relational OLAP. We have multi-dimensional or LAP and we have hybrid or LAP. Okay. okay. That's the end of this chapter. Okay, so it concludes about the data awareness. Any questions, comments?